Hello and welcome back to another Guide of War Tales. My name is Eiken and today we're continuing our class guides with the Warrior. This is a 10 minute, no bullshit, very condensed information, no repetition guide to the class and potential builds of it. As with any class in War Tales, there are plenty of ways of building it. There is no absolute right or wrong way, but today I wanted to introduce two ways of building the, uh, the Warrior that might help you to have a better outcome with it. The Warrior itself is a flexible class and it falls a bit into either support or damage dealer. Uh, and today I will show you both of the damage dealing options. Honorable mention though, before we're starting, uh, you can build uh, the entire warrior around uh, Sentinel, that's kind of uh, the support uh, tree, and with Ovation, uh, which in the unoptimized or up non-upgraded version only gives you repos. Uh, the upgraded version gives everybody inspiration. That means double their movement. So specifically if you're running a very large team that could be an absolute monster of a uh, ability and is highly recommended to have like one of them in say if you do have 20 odd or more uh, uh, characters in your band sentinel is absolutely going to shine it's not my personal preference of a playstyle. I like movement on the characters and I like to use the Valor for different topics. But you theoretically could go with uh, could uh, go with Sentinel and build a tank build around it. If you're interested in how that would work, it would be Sentinel into Valorous Duel most likely, then into Fanatism uh, as an option, Battle Cry for further support, and then Alacrity as well as uh, later going into first blood uh, or uh, into a defensive stance for more tanking. It's really a support oriented build, but I do not necessarily recommend kind of the Sentinel route uh, per se, unless you really have large uh, team. The two builds that I want to actually look into today is single target damage, aka the Berserker, and multi-target damage, aka the Executioner. Both of them have medium armor, which means they are semi-sturdy, they are bruiser, but they are not going to be the main tank. Uh, the later unlockable build of Barbarian has a couple of advantages as well, but I think it's not fully yet thought out. So we're starting uh, with the Executioner, as, is it, as it is, in my opinion, the strongest build of uh, the character. Uh, it is an AoE build and second to none when it comes to melee AoE DPS. This build is an absolute killer. It uh, starts to shine a little bit later, so I would say around uh, the time when uh, you get into level 8 and have Challenging Shout, and I'll come to that in a bit. Uh, but this build is just painful. It will eradicate enemies, and the reason why I speak so highly about it is because it really deals a lot of damage. So the core idea of execution as cutting Maelstrom costs you two Valor, uh, which is a quite hefty fee. So this is a Valor spending build, at best Valor neutral, but you're going to deal a lot of damage, and it works best when there are at least two, better three or four or even five and enemies in a close range. So, cutting maelstroms, it takes one time for each unit in the area, which means two for two, three for three, four for four, and the upgraded version <coughs> takes an additional time for every enemy that you're killing. So, if you position yourself in three or four enemies in the later stages of the game, you will eradicate all four of them, because a uh, few of them will fall earlier than the others, which triggers further swings, etc., etc. Combine that with Val uh, Valorous Chain to at least get one Valor point back as you're hitting multiple targets. That, is, that in itself is already good. So from there on, there are two trains of uh, thought. I personally go into Recklessness uh, because I like Alpha Striking. It will only work in the first round in the first attack of the fight, but 150%, uh, which is the upgraded version, additional damage means 250% of your normal damage in the first strike will result in three, four, five dead enemies right off the bat. And although it doesn't trigger multiple times, it's actually still quite potent. The other option is Fanatism, 
unupgraded version costs you 10% health and gives you a stackable 50% 50, uh, 50 damage increase at uh, the end of every round. So it's kind of delayed. The, uh, the upgraded version of it do no longer, uh, does no longer cost health, but will still guarantee you fury. So if you plan for longer fights, there are a few that will uh, run for multiple rounds, then fanatism is uh, the way to go. I personally go with recklessness, can't go wrong with that. Now, core of the build now is challenging shout. By far the best ability for the level A tree, it um, draws all enemies close to you and it applies fragility for them uh, for one round, which um, increases the damage taken for 30 um, uh, by 30%. So that is huge because the actual range of Cutting Maelstrom is two meters. It's not that uh, big, but with this ability together, you can position the enemies very, very well. And that leads to a lot of dead enemies. Once you are through that, if you want to maximize damage, you could go for Lone Wolf. It triggers sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on your positioning on the battlefield. If you are more worried about not taking damage, specifically with AOE attacks or with range attacks, Alacracy is actually not too bad. As for the main uh, level 12 ability, I never invested into Daredevil. Um, I personally didn't think that it was really, really good. Instead, what I did is the class specialization and then either get uh, Fanatism here as an, uh, as an extra one or First Blood, which is also a fantastic ability for another 35% Alpha Strike uh, damage against full targets. This build will eradicate enemies. As for how to skill it, 15 willpower as always to make sure that you are not being pushed over. 16 to 18 movement is my personal comfort zone. I like fast and uh, long movement, rest into critical hit all the way. This guy is dealing damage and he wants to crit as high as, po uh, as potential. So that's relative st relatively straightforward. Let's see what the Berserker build, uh, what the Berserker build is going to look like. So the Berserker build is an interesting one because it is single target damage. It, uh, it can be done as a one hand plus shield, um, one hand plus offhand, and also two hand uh, weapon build. Uh, build. I personally like it as either a two hand or a one hand plus half hand uh, type of build because I want to play the warrior aggressive. It uh, functions different, uh, but you will see a couple of uh, similarities. So we're starting with uh, we're we're starting with Berserker, which deals three times um, uh, damage to the target. So it's really like continuous attack, uh, which with a two hand weapon is fantastic. As such, instead of Valorous Chain, we're going into Valorous Duel. You could go with Valorous Chain and then an offhand uh, like the Torch to actually hit multiple targets. That is possible, but I would go with uh, Valorous uh, Duel all the way. Uh, the next one then is going to be, again, Recklessness, first attack, which, by the way, this the three attacks count as one attack, will deal 100% extra damage. I can see by single uh, by a single target uh, or four single target uh, build that fanatism might even be the better choice for prolonged fights. So either way is really fine. You can't go that wrong with it. Battle cry instead of challenging shout, however, is going to be the name of the game. Brutality for everyone. Upgraded version is absolutely uh, absolutely astonishing. And then you're running into Lone Wolf again charge into the back line, get the archer, get uh, the poachers, get uh, the enemy assassins and uh, just kill them. As for the class specialization, I would yet again uh, take the skill from a previous level and then either fanatism or recklessness, whatever you haven't picked. Um, alternatively, first blood if you want to uh, 100 to 0 uh, targets. It's a straightforward build. It is sweet, it is crisp, it deals a lot of damage against a single target and eliminates them. I like it, um, although I prefer Executioner a little bit more. So we are moving into the Warrior Guide Berserker gameplay section. We have an 11, uh, level 11 Warrior and we're fighting against level 14 enemies, uh, dif most uh, difficult uh, enemies in the game. Uh, this uh, equipment that I've uh, selected is 
Arcadian basic craft equipment. I've not used anything in particular. Gave him a little bit of crit and a little bit of strength as I mentioned. We're running um, it with a one hand weapon in this particular case and an off hand throwing weapon. Uh, plus uh, the critical hit trinket that allows uh, extra damage against target that are wearing light armor. And that's really our job. We're going to go into the back line. As such, we are uh, targeting these tacticians or uh, hooligans or whatever uh, the name of them are. They are enemy rangers. So we're moving up and in order to uh, get the most out of it, we want a bleeding to be applied first. Nice little crit. You can immediately see just how far uh, that is going uh, down. Um, I feel we are not wanting to waste our Berserker attack here. Said we're dealing damage. Uh, this guy is almost uh, down. We're using Fury in order to finish him. And we're already done with the job uh, of the Berserker. We're continuing with Rampage. And there we go. One, two, three. Uh, he's uh, not looking good. Could have used Brutality beforehand uh, to maybe even gotten him down, uh, which is fine, but now we've uh, buffed the proximity. If I would have used it up here, it would have even buffed uh, more. So potentially a little optimization uh, there in terms of uh, order of events. Then if we don't want to stay in combat, we can always uh, continue to disengage. Um, wanting to stay just a little bit further away. We're out of movement here, uh, which is because I needed to move in quite far, but we got one down and the other tactician is almost uh, down as well. With Lone Wolf, uh, you're dealing a crazy amount of damage in the back line and you've seen uh, the Alpha Strike potential is quite real. That brings us nicely to the last part of uh, the Warrior play. Uh, um, through for the guide. We do have this time an execution. I already mentioned this build is absolutely crazy when it comes to damage. Uh, we would have a couple of great options uh, to engage, but I will show you a normal engage, which I would say is a triplet uh, pull. Uh, Warrior in this case, uh, we're right clicking, challenging shout uh, to make sure that uh, we can uh, see the full impact. This here would be, I think, a perfect positioning for us. We're challenging shouting uh, and pulling everybody a little bit closer. That applies fragility. And the first uh, hit uh, will deal 250 points of damage. And you can see that already falls uh, the first enemy. And then from there on, we're just continuing to push them down. The only reason why this defender is still uh, well and alive is <clears throat> because they have enough guard. But even that is manageable with a little bit of a sprint and a dual hit. We're again being very neutral on our Valor cost, but are dealing the maximum amount of damage. The defenders with all of their guard are quite sturdy, but you can easily get through. And uh, if we would make our way to the back line here, that would be a death sentence for all of them. If that was helpful for you, that's the end of the warrior guide. Uh, leave a comment down below and let me know how you like to play your warrior. And if you are an, an executioner at heart, try challenging shout that like button. Make it weak and then spin it to death. Thank you and have a good one.